record. Here we go. My name's Tom Wise. Welcome to the show. I'm Melinda McKenzie. Thanks for unpacking some shit with us today. Junke Shin, as they say in Germany. There it goes. Jam-packed show today. We, I've got, I think, one of my most impressive lists of topics. And my good friend Steve Laszlo is joining us as our special guest in about 15 minutes. Backing up the camera. Give me a little more headroom. Cool. Bye, bye, bye. I, I looked him up so I'd be mentally prepared just in case, you know, there was some, he's a comic, so I got I to gotta be on track. I love him. I mean, he, uh, when I was coming up five, six years ago, I mean, I'm not even, I'm not even here, let alone coming up when I was, <laughs> when I was starting. I was like, I mean, he, the guy's a pro. He worked out in Los Angeles, you know, oh, and then he, he decided, yeah. he decided to come here and raise a family, you know, yeah. li lead a reasonable life doing other things. But right. funny. I, I love him. He, yeah. Good. I'm super excited about your list because I know uh, when you say something like that, you mean it. Something's going on that Tom made a good list. I know. Usually, I, I've been a little lazy. I've been leaning on your list a little bit. That's all right. That's fine, right? We yeah. take our turns. Are you, yeah. How's your list look? Oh, it's good. Are you kidding me? I love making lists for this show. Making a list. <laughs> checking it twice. All right. I'm going to give my... Go ahead. You give your list. I always give mine. I'm so... Okay. I'm, I'm like you know, a dog. I like to waiting. write things down. I'm tail. So... Um, and of course, these could be taken in any order. Uh, Cuomo help. We've been talking Hello. about that. So this happened. The Crown. Samuel L. Jackson. Jeez, your name dropping. And Judgy McJudgerson. <laughs> <laughs> well, she could. All right. I like all of those, of course. Samuel L. Jackson. I, 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 I peeked on your Facebook, so I kind of know what that is. Well, something happened with him this morning that you don't know about. Okay, well, there you yeah. go. I'm intrigued. Yes. Here are mine. Yes. My phone is ringing for no reason. Do, 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 do. All right. The check, say my name, old movies, satisfaction, create content, Airbnb. You're on a roll, sir. You are on a roll. I'm so proud of you. Those are all good. <sighs> All right, before we get started, can I just, I wanted to point something out real quick before we get started. And I know we're on iTunes, so I'm going to try to visually describe this as well as I can. Thank Do you, you see what is sitting on the table next to me? Can you see it from there, what this is? It's booze, <laughs> Hennessy on ice. Thank you. So Have you started a new hobby? Well, <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, my, I was outside with Reagan last night, and my neighbors from across the street, I haven't met all the neighbors. I've been here about a year and a half. And it's a neighbor that we wave, right? We wave because it's Brooklyn. We're, we're pretty close. But there's been a pandemic. So we all have our masks on. We're waving. And um, I met his mom previously. I hadn't met him. So last night, he runs over and he goes, hey, neighbor, hey. And I was like, hey, hey. And he said, do you like to drink? Now, that could mean anything. And I, you know, he seemed harmless. And so I was trying to be friendly as I do. And I said, well, Sure, who, who doesn't? Because that's the truth. And he said, what do you like to drink? Well, then I panicked because I don't know what this is leading to, right? Yeah, like, what's, the, what's the last question? <laughs> so I started naming random things because I don't know. I'm a rum drinker, blah, blah, blah. And he said, do you like Hennessy? And I said, well, sure. And so he, he, he brings it over. He says, I want you to stay safe. Let us know if you need anything. Here you go. Look at that. Look and, at that. And, and so here's the thing. I don't know that I've ever had Hennessy, to be honest with you. So I brought it so I could try it on the show because I'm not, I'm not a drinker. I'm really not a drinker. People think I am. I hold a lot of cocktails. Why would people think you're a drinker? I'll tell you why. Because I pretend like I am. What are you, <laughs> Dean Martin? Uh, when, well, kind of, yes. When we go into social situations, people like to do shots and this and that. And I am known to take my shot when everybody's drinking and throw it over my shoulder because I'm a weak baby drinker. So I didn't want to- You've never it. thrown a shot over your shoulder, yeah, have, I have you? Yeah, I really have. Ask people. I'm sorry. You have people, to leave the party. People won't take no for an answer and it's just better to behave as if you're drinking the shot. And now if it's a situation where you, you ask me, do you want a shot? Either I'll drink it or say, man, I'm not up for it. But if it's a crowd and it's a social pressure, I'll just say yes. So you'll take the marijuana, but not actually smoke I mean, it. Come on. I like marijuana. I'll smoke the marijuana. So Hennessy, are you a drinker of Hennessy? 
You know what? I probably have never tried Hennessy, but I could imagine what it's like. It's, it's bourbon, isn't it? It's a cognac. Cognac. How delightful. I know. I got very excited. So then I researched what does one drink with Hennessy, and it says a lot of people drink Coca-Cola with it. So I wanted to try it straight first because I feel like that's the only real way to try a drink. Then but I brought... You put Coke in it. It's, you're wasting it. Well, that's what I thought too. Do you do you put Coke in a cognac? That sounds sounds uh, he uh, sounds. So I'm gonna. What's try the name it? I'm looking for? Um, hedonistic maybe. No, or... I'm thinking something that's something that's horrible. Oh uh, well, I mean, it does sound horrible. Why sounds do... blasphemy. It's you don't mess up a Hennessy or, or a fine cocktail with Coke. So. So cheers to this episode today, and cheers to my neighbor for giving me an entire bottle of Hennessy, and I'm going to try it. It said it has a woody taste to it. I never know what that means, with a little bit of a floral. It means you get an erection. <laughs> That's very woody. So here goes to um, the Hennessy, and then we'll have to maybe start drinking on the show. Yeah, I think that's a good precedent. You know, it's lighter than what I thought it would be, and it doesn't burn going down my throat, which is always a scary thing, whether you're drinking alcohol or in a dating relationship. I was, I was not going to say anything. I'm thank you. I thank you for doing burn. something. It doesn't burn. <laughs> I mean, cognac has to do. It, it, isn't the process like wine or something? Isn't there wine involved? You know, that's what uh, when I read about this, that's what they were saying that it's it's a more expensive because it's a longer process and how they have to ferment and do everything. So it was really lovely, and I'm I'm just so thrilled that he did this. But now I feel like, what can I do for him? Right? I mean, shouldn't I do something? Shouldn't I do a gift back? Reciprocate? Yeah. I mean, well, I if you make if you're making bread, make an additional loaf and give it to him. I think we've met before, and I think you know I don't make bread, mister. Using as an example. Okay. I meant to say knitting something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that's, I do that. I definitely do that. Well, I, I, well, I need to think of something that's very sweet and personal. I know he doesn't expect anything back, but it was just such a lovely gesture. Of course. Well, that's and because nice. of the pandemic and everybody had masks, we, we did a bumping the elbow thing, nice. which I guess is the new pandemic, you know, whatever. So. Hi, how are you? So cheers. So let's do one of your topics. I'm very excited. So, hey, I want to tell you, I, uh, I learned what Bruce Willis's pickup line is. Oh, gosh. What? Hey, what kind of plans do you have for sex later on? Are you or, serious? That's apparently his pickup line. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. he doesn't say it in the grocery store, you know. We don't know where he says it. Oh. You know what? I read the, uh, the Demi Moore book. Did you? You probably didn't. The Demi Moore autobiography, fantastic, highly recommend it. You know I love my books, but I will tell you something about Demi Moore. I never really liked her too much. I never really thought she was that great. This book really turned my head around on where she came from and how the media portrayed her. And it's a fantastic read. And she spoke about Bruce, and here's the thing I loved about her. With Ashton Kircher and uh, Bruce Willis, she never spoke ill of them, even though things, she gave some facts about what happened, but then she never, you know, uh, degraded them or, or gave a personal opinion about how bad they were, which I, I really appreciate. And her and Bruce are friends again, which you and your ex are. I don't have that little trick up my sleeve, but I applaud everybody who does. It can be hard to get there. But if you have, if you have a long perspective, I mean, but, but the other person has to be willing. You can't be... You can't be friends with somebody that doesn't want to be friends and is going to hold a garage and can't, yeah. become, you know, meet you halfway. Otherwise, yeah. Yeah, otherwise you know, I, if, if my ex was just, oh, no, he's an asshole. And just, right. I couldn't be friends with her then. Right. 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 Absolutely. So let's do one of your cool topics. Okay. Um, all right. All right. I, I was thinking about, I, there's two topics I want to maybe bring up. When you whisper, I know it's going to be good. All right, here's, let me just talk about a pet peeve I have. Okay. Okay, and it's Say My Name, All right? Okay. I love listening to podcasts. I love listening to interviews. I you know, I listen to Alec Baldwin or Carolla or even my sports guy. I love listening to him because he has on interesting people, and he also talks about other things besides sports. It's Colin Coward, okay? A huge pet peeve that I've got with listening to an interview is when the guy says goodbye. Here's the, uh, the interview. Colin Coward says, hey, uh, Jerry, it's, it's been a delight. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for taking time out. You know, you're welcome back at any time. 
And then Jerry says, oh, okay, yeah, thanks, guy. I had a great time. Thanks for having me on. I'm sorry. Can you say Colin's name? Can't you say the interviewer's name? It's such a huge pet pee with me. Pee. Really? It's like, oh, because the guy's like, uh, I was watching, I was, uh, I was listening to Tommy Lee being interviewed by Adam Carolla. They're having a great time for 15 minutes, talking like they're old boys and all, but, and Carolla says, Tommy Lee, thanks for coming. All right, buddy. Thanks. It's like, if I had, if, if I was a, that's somebody's agent, if I'm that quarter, the quarterbacks never, they always use the guy's name. It's always somebody else in a, <laughs> in a different position. They will inevitably not say the interviewer's name. If I was the agent of the guy who's being interviewed, I take the, the host's name, put it on a three by five and stick it right by the microphone, stick it right by the camera. So you say, Colin, I, I've had a great time today. Thanks for having me on. It ends the interview on such a positive high note that now we're connecting. I'm connecting because I'm uh, saying your name. Does that not, you don't even recognize that? Or you... I, I have zero recognition of that at all because my pet peeve is the opposite. I can't stand it during, <laughs> I can't stand during an interview when someone says their name all the time. That drives not me. Not their nuts. name. How about when they're saying your name? I don't want to. Let me ask you a question. Blah, 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 blah. Don't you like it when the guy says your name? Of course, but. Yes, but that wasn't my point. My point is during an interview when when it's the what's the method they used to teach where you say someone's name all the time. All like you well, know, Tom, that's great, Tom. And you know yeah. and thanks again, okay. Tom. Yeah. And you know what, Tom? That that drives me crazy. Right. I've never noticed I'll start paying attention now. It's unnatural after a while to say someone's name a hundred yes. times. But you and say it you remember? might say it when you're making a point or certainly when you're saying goodbye or saying hello. That way in bed too. Don't call me baby in bed. Say my name. You Say can call name. me baby. I've I've stopped complaining about the women I've dated that have never said my name. It's insane. Really? Not like in bed such, or just ever. Really? Ever. I've dated women, multiple dates. They've never said my name. It's insane. wow. We need to dig into this psychology of why this is a thing. Tom is a very easy name to say. <laughs> and now I'm thinking, have I said it enough? Now I'm very worried. No, you're not. You're not on the list. Okay. Well, that's very interesting. But I do have a thing about if you're in bed with someone, I, I don't. I don't like pet names because I feel like you know. Let's mm. let's just keep it more personal, make it more real. You know my name, just like that song. Say my name. It's Say interesting name. because I'm trying to think. I mean, I'm all about saying people's name. But, uh, I but don't in know bed, that. you I, stay I baby. Bed, I think I think in the bed you should go on that the track. <laughs> as long as you know their name, because of I mean, course. have you ever been called the wrong name? Not in bed. Yeah, I've I've been called the wrong name during an argument when they were really mad and they said someone else's name and I'm like, you're not even mad at me. <laughs> you automatically win the argument at that point. Pretty much. You don't even know who you're arguing with. <laughs> it's not even my fault. Son of a bitch. Her fault. Well, you know what? I'll pay attention to that, Tom. I look what I just did. I just said nice boom, split it uh, in. You know what? I I've not recognized that, but I will pay attention because now I'm worried when I do my segments. I don't I don't believe I do. I don't believe I say their name at the rap like that. I it's so it's it's put such a nice button on the whole okay. thing. Now you're friends. See, I the same way I want to connect to the host when I'm on home shopping. I yeah. want to say the guy's name because. I want to connect with him. Of course, just, I'm, I'm not even being mechanical, just on a human basis, I want to connect with him. But it's also good for business because the viewer recognizes Guy, right? They know Guy, I'm being invited to the Guy's space, his three hour space as a guest. Right. And I would like for the viewers to look upon me favorably. And if I'm connecting with Guy and saying Guy's name and Guy saying my name and the viewers, oh, Guy's blessing this person. He's part of the family. Rather than somebody saying, yeah, thanks for having me on, uh, whatever, am I still here? Or goodbye, well, mystery man. Like, you're missing an opportunity to connect. I feel terrible because typically it's on Terribly, my it's an adverb. <laughs> Fuck off, dude, that's not the point. I feel terribly because I need to use my adverb correctly. <laughs> I feel terribly. I no longer feel terrible. Because when I finish my segments, typically what happens is they'll say, you know, they don't always say my name, but they're like, thanks, whatever. And I typically say, my pleasure. Uh, I never say, hey, hey, uh, you know. You know how much more? Well, 
apparently I'm an idiot. I'll do it tomorrow for my show. It's a, it's, it's, it's free and you make, now you, now you make a connection with that person on the other side. Well, I'll do it tomorrow. I don't know. I was giving you the tip of the day. You are giving me the tip. I feel terrible. Now I just, I just put $50,000 in your pocket. How much better could my life be had I been using this properly? Because if Alice from Channel 13 in Tulsa, she hears you say her name, you're validating her. Oh, this famous person from New York is saying my name. <laughs> now I have to get drunk. I'm a very, very upset. And I'm not saying people's names. All right. I will, you know what I'll do when I do my shows tomorrow, I'll put a card up there to remind me. I mean, how sweet is that when you say, Nick, Alice, thanks for having me on today. It's been a really, it's been my pleasure. Oh, that's money in the bank. Those folks will go through a burning wall to get you back on. Really? And so I can suck at everything else as long as I say their name. Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to test this theory out because I do. Yes. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I remember when I was, when I first got into comedy, I was listening to a podcast or I think I was reading a tip sheet or whatever it was like a reading a book about it. He goes, yeah. every time some, a waitress gives you a, a glass of water, a bottle of water, you give her a dollar, give her a tip, you know, say her name because being friends with the club and the people, the employees of the club will ingratiate you at some point. The, the club owner might say, Hey, I wonder, Oh, we got a, we got an opening. The waitress, Hey, you know, and, I do try to actually say the name of the wait staff because I feel like they're so underappreciated and get treated so terribly. But it, it, it's interesting in the fact that. Ooh, I got to do. Also, I want to advertise. For, I didn't have to stretch so you can see my shirt. Hang on. Do you recognize my shirt, Tom? I love it. Right? L M B G. So. Okay, you taught me something. Let's see if I can teach you something, or is Steve getting ready to come on? I'm trying to, Steve's, I, I sent him the link, and he can't get on. Probably Steve is getting ready. So I don't want to start a whole topic, because we, I, do you already have topics you want to talk to Steve about? I have one topic in particular. Okay, great. All right, so. Um, I understand. Yeah, I sent him the link. <laughs> He's just. By. Huh? No, I said standing by for Steve. Standing by for Steve. Which is. Totally fine. So how long was Steve, has Steve been a comedian? He's still active, right? Yeah, he's still active. I mean, as active as anybody is these days, you know, it's tough. Yeah. It, is he doing online shows? Because I know oh, that nobody does that. I mean, I've seen people, I've seen people. And, and then of course the really famous um, comedians are doing a lot of online stuff with like benefits for like, you know, voting and things like that to get people super involved with, um, with their shows. I don't have you wa I haven't watched any online um comedians during this, have you? I got in, you know, I've watched some guy back in March. He was doing a show and he was it was like without the feedback, it's really it's really hard. It's really hard. Cuz cuz a lot of humor, I mean, you can have you got I was talking to my brother Patrick about this. I said Humor comes in a couple of different ways. It's saying funny things or doing funny things. So if all your things are, you know, Rodney yeah. Dangerfield punchline, set up punchline, set up punchline, that may be entertaining. And then, but if it's, you've got to act or you've got to give a look or a voice or something, you need some feedback for that. Well, that's absolutely true. And there's nothing worse than telling a great joke and then there, you hear no sound afterwards. That's a terrible, that's a really terrible feeling. I think we've all felt that at some point or another. Steve is here. Steve, I'm Beth Lansing. Wait, now I'm Steve. Now he is Steve. I'm Yay, Steve. welcome Steve. What's up? How are you? What's up? <laughs> I just, I just did a, uh, podcast with Tom, but I didn't record it because I'm an idiot. Well, apparently it wasn't meant to be, and now the next one will be even better. Melinda, so, remember, remember the first one we did, and I didn't record it. I didn't record the audio. Yes. It took me a month to recover. Yes, Tom. It was a month before so, I, spiraled. Spiraled. I, I film a lot of stuff, and I'm always like camera sound. I should have said something. I didn't think about it because I, I didn't, didn't think about it either. Obviously. Okay, let's move forward. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We'll never make that mistake again. No, Correct. you won't. You just learned a lesson. So, so I'm you know, Steve. I'm Steve. Introduce us, Tom. Steve is. Um, I met Steve about five or six years ago. He's a comedian, professional comedian, 
Um, I, I was an up and comer. It's, it still am. I'm struggling, but I enjoy it. And I met him. At, I don't know if I was the MC or I, I was. I think we're all up and comers. Show, right. But I was watching the show. I was very much, um, you know, local celebrity, Steve Laszlo. I was oh, like, my wow. God. I was overwhelmed. Oh, my God. When I met him. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, then I saw I was doing a show. I go, oh, my God, this guy's hilarious. He's got an unbelievable closing show. It's great. And he's, Steve does both the funny things he says and funny things that he acts. So, he, it's great. It's totally frozen on my end. So, oh, I yes. don't know. You are? You are, Tom. You're, now you're back. No. She yeah. was, she was frozen. She was frozen. But did you hear? Time. Did you hear all Tom's kind words about me? You might have to say it all no. again. You might have. To <laughs> yeah, you don't say it all again and add different stuff this time too. <laughs> like how good looking I am. Yeah, good looking. He's good. Steve goes all the Shut way back up. to California comedy when you know, and he's worked and he knows guys that he. Guys that, that are very uh, that are famous. Well, I was in New York way longer than California. All right, give me give me your little bio. That's uh, that we can talk about. I it. yeah, I started doing comedy in 1989 when I was 19 in, on Long Island with uh, at Eastside Comedy Club with Kevin James and Adam Ferrara, and they did much better with it than me. But um, yeah, and then I did comedy on Long Island for years. Then I moved to LA, and then I came here. So. To raise his family. I started headlining in New York before I left New York, but then in LA, no one headlines. You just do, you just do short spots. There's really no money to be made in LA we'll be, doing comedy. We'll be playing depressing violin music underneath. Your okay, awesome. Part of the show. Awesome. Um, yeah, and then I came to Tampa a long time ago, 2005, 2006. So how do you get the how do you get the the, the nuts to to start comedy at 19 in New York? God, I wish I had started sooner. I know. I just always did it anyway. You know what I mean? Like, so whether you're doing it in an, at a party in a kitchen or on stage. Did somebody I don't say know. you're funny? You should be on stage, or you just told everybody I'm funny. I'm going to be on stage. Well, I had always I had done like theater, and like I was the only one amongst my friends who did. You know, and I just wanted to be on stage. Yeah. Yeah. And then Eddie Murphy uh, came through Eastside, like when I was like 16, he was there. And I went and saw him and I, you know, I wanted to do stand up. I had already wanted it, you know, like I was watching Robin Williams, you know, back in the days when they would make comedy albums and they would do, they'd have big shows, you know what I mean? And they'd always wear like a leather jumpsuit. <laughs> Red leather. Well, well, not Robin, but. Yeah, so you know when when comedy was it was different then I guess. I want to ask yeah. a question. You, Millen, did you have any questions? Um. Oh, well, of course I have a lot of questions, but I was I was going to ask Steve. Um. You know, I tumbled into stand up at a later age. My first uh, live show that I did because I didn't know the rules of comedy. Someone asked me to do forty five minutes at the oh my improv. God. <laughs> at the improv, In Tampa. Yes. <laughs> I, I was a, a guest for Tommy Davidson because they had seen me do a uh, open night. And so oh. I said, what am I going to say no to that? So I, I went crazy. in and did it. And it was fun. I wasn't great, but I was good enough that no one like booed me. And, you know, but it was, mm -hmm. it, but the, the irony was I wasn't smart enough to be afraid of it. Right. Like I just went up there. Right, and did right. it it's like a white, I, it's like a white belt in karate. You don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> Well, you know what? I think you're better off starting later in life because at 19, um, I mean, you know, I was horribly tortured as a child, so I had plenty to draw from, but most people aren't tortured enough as children. So <laughs> I once, uh, somebody once said to a comic, he goes, you know, your, um, your childhood was way too normal. You're never going to make it. <laughs> that's, that's, so. a that's me. That's a fact. I am. Um, yeah. I'm lucky enough to have friends here, and I live in Brooklyn. Have friends here that are comedians. So I've been. Uh, Wait, you live in Flint? You live in Flint, Michigan? No, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York. Oh, I thought you said Flint. No, but I'm sorry, uh, darling. Your, your internet connection is a little weak today. Uh, she's frozen. You guys keep Whoa. freezing too. I have no idea what's because I'm plugged into the router. So wow. I, don't know. I wonder what's going on. She's frozen. Frozen, I tell you. Frozen. 
Not? So you're in Brooklyn, you're in the comedy capital of the world. Yeah, exactly. And so I've hung out a lot at the Comedy Cellar. And um, uh, I know people like mm. Greer Barr and Sherrod Small and people like that. Mm. Um, so it's a lot of fun. I feel dumb talking because everything's frozen, so I can't really even... You want to you hang up and call back in? She's frozen. Why is it always my fault? I don't know, but me and Steve are fine. I, I finally figured out HD. Am I HD? My Excellent. HD. Now it's the, hey, that team at Stephen Tom show. Finally, <laughs> our dreams come true. It's being recorded. <laughs> we, we, convinced, we convinced her she was she was breaking up. She was just in the way. Excellent. Now, Why don't you put on a wig and you could be her and I'll interview you. Oh, shit. She's back. Here we go. Oh, shit. She's back. She's going to be in the guest position, though. Well, what does it matter? Otherwise, she should be up top. Yeah. Now you clear as a bell. Now clear as a bell. Good. All right. So what did I miss? Well, we talked about you. Yeah. Yay. About how our plan was right. to get rid of you anyway. We wanted to get to the Stephen <laughs> Tom show. Tom was telling me he wants to try and get you to take your meds. But I said you're better without him, you know? <laughs> you know what? It's hit or miss with me. You never <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. Don't take your meds. You're no fun when you're all numb. All right. I've got, I've got a question. <laughs> I've yeah. got a question, and I think the Laszlo was the perfect ho guest for this. Right. Is how do you what's do you, can you only be successful in comedy is if you're famous? I mean, you can't. Well, no. Not everybody's going to be famous. It depends what you call fame. Satisfaction. So people like Bert Kreischer, um, Tom Segura are huge to people who know comedy, but you know, if you went up to anyone on the street and said, do you know who Burt Kreischer is? They wouldn't know. Or Tom Segura, you know what I mean? It's not like they're a household name. I mean, you got But I'm guys. sure they're making a ton of dough and they're making Netflix shows and comedy specials and touring the country, you know, when they can, uh, I mean, you know, so they're making great money, you know? I know, but um, what about the guy that's the, the, the guy that's you know going from show to show does you know thirty six oh, weekends a year? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Only one sperm gets the egg. The rest of us die off or killed by the white blood cells. Yeah, I mean you can't make money in comedy. You you know it's like it's not a bad side hustle. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, was there the first moment that you thought, "Wow, I'm I'm making it. I'm doing this." Was there what was your first moment where you're like, "Wow, I'm really doing this"? Well. I guess I, I had always been torn between being a marketing director and being a, com a comedian. You can't say to your boss, hey, listen, I'm going to take off on Thursday. I'll be back like Monday afternoon. Right. <laughs> they, they just didn't like it for some reason. So for years and years, I chased both things and you can't, you know. Yeah. So then 9-11 happened and my wife's brother was um, New York City firefighter who was killed. So... It wasn't long after that that I was like, you know, life is short, and I moved to L.A. And we quit our jobs, sold the house, and moved to L.A., just like the Billy Joel song. Wow. And just went to the comedy store and just stayed there. Just, you know. Yeah, and I mean, I got on this, The Tonight Show, and I got on the Comedy Central, and I mean, I'm a working comedian. Not right now, because I have diabetes, and I'm 52. <laughs> and there are no like all the road gigs were canceled yeah you know i used to travel around all the time you know at least two weekends of a month i'd be out on the road somewhere and i would always complain about being on the road and now i, I wish i could be out on the road somewhere yeah all right yeah. i've got can i leave comedy for one second and ask a, a yeah. question a moral question Ooh. sure so about four years ago i was doing business my what a light was selling i was doing business with uh lazy day campers slash camping world okay and i they bought a couple of i'm serious maybe four dozen what a lights that they sold in a local store in tampa right and i've done some invoicing and then like two years after we stopped business i got a return for something and they wanted eighteen dollars, and I was fine. Every I don't want to, you, you know, whatever. So I, I just, eighteen dollars, yeah. So whatever it was, and I, we took care of it and took the return run. Yeah. So the other day, I'm at the I'm at the mailbox. I'm gathering my mail, and in between the political messages, I see a a, a letter 
it's from lazy days. Uh oh. I'm going, you know, what have I, you know, another, another return? They're suing, they're suing you. No. So. They gave you $13,000. What? Yeah. It's a check for $13,000. So they sold your product. No. I th they never had $13,000 of the product. Oh. And it's for invoices from two months ago, 9 28 mm. 2020. I never sent yeah. them any invoices. They're laundering money for someone. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. What are you going to do about that, Tom? Well, you've got to return the check, right? You can't cash that check. Well, now that's tear it up. Air, you have to. <laughs> Well, nothing's aired until I put it on the air. I would imagine they're laundering money. Yeah. What? What does yeah. that mean? Yeah. So they 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 make up these fake invoices so they can, yeah. you know. But they never really send you the check. Maybe they do. Maybe some people do get it. I don't know. Wires I got don't know. Bust. I'm Why don't you con contact them and be like, what's up? I didn't send you anything. I wouldn't. Don't say too much. Just call them and say, I'm just confirming this check and then see what they say. Let them do all the talking. Well, I uh, thought, so yeah, is this accounts receivable? We got this check and then we're just wondering. Well, I, I'm guessing that they keyed in the wrong, you know, code yeah. for the uh, uh, code for uh, my vendor ID. Right. You know, if you could send ID. me the invoices for these or. My vendor ID is probably one digit away from the guy that's really waiting for his check. For well, something. listen, you know you didn't send them products, so you can't yeah. keep it. No, I can't. Is there a chance you did and you just forgot? Is there a chance? Thirteen thousand dollars, I doubt it. <laughs> Tom can be disorganized at times. Or keep it and say "fuck you, sue me." You know what I mean? Like be a Republican. Wow. Be a Republican. That's a new record. You sent me this check. I must have given you product. That's right. I clearly deserve We've it. We've done business in the past. But it's crazy, isn't it? No, that is crazy. And well, yeah. What? You got it. Remember that check it, I got for $8,000 a couple months yes. ago? It's yes. not enough money to make it worth the trouble it might cause. Yeah. No. Well, it'd be no, uh, here's the deal. Of course, I'm not going to uh, keep the check. But uh, yeah. your argument could be some bookkeeper <laughs> opens the mail. Here's a check. Boom. It goes into the, into sure. the bank account, right? Right. We didn't know. I don't know. We're blind yeah. here. We're just, we yeah. got processes. Yeah. Accounts receivable. Got a check. They deposited it. You got to follow up. I'll be, I'll be very curious to know what the story is. Cause what if they're like, Hey, yeah. it's okay. Cash it. Man. Listen, have them cash the check. If they say nothing, keep the money. If they say anything, go, I'll give you eight grand back. <laughs> <laughs> For my trouble. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's a finder's fee. I mean, it's interesting because people always talk about, you know, doing the right thing. Under it's a filing system. fee. But and then, then, listen, you have to have the check return fee. Yeah, we yeah. have to pay extra fees when we deal All with it. Right. I mean, but here's yeah. a reality where it's really happened. Yeah. You well, know, unlike everybody's on a high horse. If I saw $5,000 in cash, I'd ask the closest homeless person if this was their money. Right. Oh, no, I'd keep that money. Yeah, I've never, have any of you ever found wads of cash? Like, I've, I found like a 20, but, and I never looked around because I was like, finders keepers, but. Um, I found a hundred once. <gasps> what? I found a Mazda Miata once, but I didn't okay. keep it. I didn't keep it. Was the guy in the car at the time? <laughs> no. Well, when I was going to Adelphi, when I was studying um, for the Series 7, because I worked for the Wolf of Wall Street, which is a separate story. So, but it was a time of temptation, apparently. So what happened was there was, I would eat my lunch in the parking lot every day in between classes. And I noticed this brand new Mazda Miata. And I noticed that it's been there for a few days. And then it's been there for a week. And then it's been there for 14 days. So I go over and I try the door handle and sure enough, it's open. Oh. And I flip down the visor. There are the keys. No yeah. way. Just like a now, trucker movie. Yeah. And the guy that I got uh, weed from at the time, who would, I lived, in, I lived in, a, I lived Juan. in Astoria. I lived in Astoria. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll call him Bob for purposes of the story. So Bob, Bob would always send people to deliver the weed. You know, he had a whole thing going. And uh, his name was Alex, actually. But it does, I'm, not, I'm not giving his last name. And I got to, I got to know Alex. From Alex. 
Uh, you buy weed from Alex? Yeah, it's probably the same Alex. He sends a guy. Did this Alex? He robbed a check cashing place with a bunch of friends and shotguns. Who hasn't? Oh, probably. So I tell Alex about it, and Alex is always like, "Do you want weed? Do you want coke? Do you want acid? I just want weed. Do you want a gun? I can get you a gun." <laughs> no, I just want weed out. Yeah. So, and it was amazing weed, but it was way too expensive. Anyway, I tell him about the Miata, and he tells me. Drive it to the city, drop it off at this address, and I'll give you seven grand. And uh, he goes, you know, obviously somebody dropped it off there and forgot about it, whatever, they won't know. And you're just driving from Adelphi into, um, you know, into Astoria. That's all it was. Wow. So, <laughs> so Seven grand later. Yeah, no. And at the time, I'm working for the Wolf of Wall Street. So yeah. greed, greed is every day. It's yeah. all I eat live and breathe these are the stories we bring steve but i do you know i don't take the car yeah i don't i don't because it's grand theft auto and yeah. most i've ever stolen is a pack of gum when i was 10 so i don't take the car but uh, i see the girl she shows up with her parents while i'm eating lunch like four or five days later and the and like one of the tires is almost flat at this point it's been almost a month so he's yelling at her because apparently someone was supposed to come pick up the car and didn't. Okay. And he's yelling at her that it could have been stolen. Wow. And I'm like, man, you don't even fucking know. And I totally could have driven it to the city and no one would have ever known. Yeah. You're probably, you know, not, but it's the living with it. You have to live with it. And then I feel like when you well, do, it's not mine. You're always going to be looking over your shoulder, right? Anytime anything comes up with that, you're always going to be worried about it. It's not worth. It's not. I'm not. I'm not a thief. I'm just not a thief. You know. Yeah. Just yeah. Not a, you know, wow. but I do. I do steal things from Walmart. Of course. <laughs> I mean, I I put things on the bottom of the cart, and then if they catch it, they catch it. If they don't, they don't. That's and hilarious. Then, That's even if they sick. catch it, even if they find it, because I'm white, there's no problem. I well, just go, oh, I forgot. I forgot. You know, yeah, if I was, if, they're not going to yeah. shoot and kill you. Are right. they? If I was black, they would shoot and kill me for they sure. Kill you. It would they would murder. tase me and then call the cops yeah. and they would shoot me um, over. Yeah. And then if I lived, lock me up for 60 years <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> for over a bag of dog food. But yeah. because I'm white, they're like, oh, no. see, he's, he forgot. That's, yeah. That truly is the white privilege. That truly of course. Because I could, I could go, oh, I, I thought you got it. You know right. what I mean? I thought you. Right. Well, and I'll do, that, I'll do that with the wife and kids with me to like amp up the feeling of stealing. You know what I mean? Because like, <laughs> <laughs> who's, you know what I mean? I just bought $300 worth of shit. I'm going to steal the dog food. Yeah. You know what I mean? $12 like, bag of dog. Right, well, right. My, my son $12. bought. $12. No way. What are you? My, my son got, bought a, uh, a video game from Walmart a couple, three years ago. And the disc was cracked, but he he waited two weeks to do anything. Didn't have the receipt. I said, "Well, give me that. You, this was cracked. Yeah. And he bought it, right? They take yeah. it back. They right. take it right back." He he was amazed. I was able to take it back and get a refund. You know, without yeah the receipt. I said, "Son, I could go back there and get a forty-two inch TV and just walk it up to customer service and ask for right. a refund." I think you and I, Old if we guy. were if we were in suits, Tom, oh. we could go into like a Target. If we were in suits and we had um, clipboards. Yeah, we well, could go into Target and say we're from corporate. Right, we're here to you know to judge the whole store. We could get the whole staff to do the hokey pokey. I had this idea to do this a reality show called "We're from Corporate." We it's should funny. try it. We it's, should try it. It's it's the one it's the one superpower like you know a a hot right. a hot thirty right. five year old woman gets everybody's attention Look, there. They, all, but a guy in a suit. If we could get a few names like who the regional sales guy is or whatever, yeah. and yeah. we walk in there right and we go listen. Yeah. Robert Domingo sent us. You're getting killed by Walmart. What are you guys doing? Sales yeah. are down. That's true. And see what we can get them to do. <laughs> That's very true. And the only advantage I have over, over you being a female is I can hang around schoolyards. Yes, and no right. One can be suspicious of me. Yes. No one yeah. can tell me to go. Or, or as a female, all you have to do is start crying. True. As a white female, and the entire world will sob. True. What is wrong? That's true. What is, if as a man, if I cry in public, people are afraid of me. Yes. People are afraid of me. But if a woman cries in public, it's, yes. everyone must save her. That's it's, very it's, true. It's like a Disney rule. It's like a rule of it's Disney. Like it is. People can't right. help themselves. Well, I had told Tom oh earlier. Oh my God, what's wrong? Let me help you. Well, I, 
I don't know if this is true. You tell me if it's true, Steve. I've only been in uh, Brooklyn eight years, but uh, I was told when I first moved here, you're not a true New Yorker. Where are you from? Uh, nowhere. I'm a military brat, but I lived mm -hmm. in uh, Florida before I moved here, but I've, I've lived all around. Okay. Um, so someone told me you're not a true New Yorker until you cry in public. And so I, I've seen, as you know, and you're, you see a lot well, of Well, no, are, listen, you have to cry in public. And then if someone goes, what's wrong? You go, fuck you. <laughs> Well, the thing was, it eventually, Leave me alone. it eventually happened because living here is hard, but no one bothered me. What I liked about it was people looked me direct in the eye and kind of right. nodded like, yeah, I get it, and, and left me alone because they're like, yeah, it's hard to live here. And I thought that was fascinating that it was a, an accepted practice because I wasn't wailing or, you know, right. or anything. No, else. I think you're not a New Yorker until you get groped on the subway. Oh, that's all it takes? That's every day. Oh. That's every, every woman I know has been groped on the subway. <laughs> And I'm like, what about me? What am I, chopped liver? I, I, could, I couldn't even imagine living in the city now. I lived in the city in the early 90s, late yeah. 80s, late 80s, early 90s. And even back then, you would have to force your way onto a train at five o'clock. Yeah. You know, like it's Japan. I can't even imagine what it's like now. I can't even. Yeah. I mean, well, now because of the pandemic, very All different, right. right? It's very empty. Different. Um, it's, it's very empty. empty, but I mean, I've been lucky enough since I've lived here, I've worked freelance, so I would only ride the train during the off hours, right? Where are you in Brooklyn? Um, I live over by the Flatbush area outside of Leopard's Gardens. Yeah. yeah, I mean, my whole family, my dad grew up in Brighton Beach, and my grandfather's okay. from Greenpoint. Like, oh, yeah. Where's I Brooklyn as it gets? to go to Greenpoint. You know, that's the hot spot, Greenpoint. It is? Yes. Wow. Top dollar to live in Greenpoint because of the views. And because um, that's where all of the hipsters move to. So, yeah, that's the place. You know, it's point. Well, Steve, um, do you want to promote anything before we say goodbye? Um, just life. Everyone life. stay alive. Stay alive and I will find you. Okay. What about your real estate company? <laughs> oh, yeah, what about, you know, I've had, I had one sale between, I had a whole bunch of clients going and it all just went away like March 13th. Oh, yeah so but in the meantime i had one sale it was a villa and i sold it in three hours i sold it before i ever even got inside it wow. that's how how quickly things are selling here wow um and prices are sky high so yeah. it's it's tough like i, I had a client 20 percent to put down and great credit and just keeps getting beat out you know because wow. things are selling above list so they don't appraise so you got to have cash. You got to have more cash to bring to the deal. Yeah, we had slim inventory, and then that got cut in half. So it's supply and demand, you know? Yeah. But and the you're, market's you're in down. Tampa? Tampa? Yeah, Tarpon. I live in Tarpon, right where Tom lives. Oh, yeah, Tarpon. Okay, sure. You guys met at an improv class, right? We both worked for HSN. Oh, and I then thought you, for some reason, I thought you guys met in an improv that's class. That's the story I tell. I mean, Tom. Oh, all right. Awesome. I, I, that's good. My, my story is that we actually became friends after he saw a picture of me in a thong. That's my story. So it just well, depends on who you ask and what time. <laughs> we know of each other. That, that will catch people's eye. You know what I mean? It's like, Wong. <laughs> but yeah, right. we were at HSN together. We knew of each other, but we didn't particularly hang out so much. I mean, Tom is very married. high level. Very yeah. high level. Yeah, you don't look married. him in the eye in the halls. You let him go. <laughs> is that true tom no i would allow anybody to look me in the eye <laughs> You're too small. we can't see you in the eyes so yeah so well, anyway yes yeah, sand crane homes charles ruttenberg realty if you need to buy or sell I can or a, a comedian yeah. private events private yeah events? well we're gonna Socially. start doing we want to start doing outdoor shows but I, yeah. yeah i'd have to be in like top of a crane with yep. a chem suit on. I don't know, but we'll have fun. All right. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, I was stop like, well, please come back. I will. I totally will. All right. You have to let That's yourself out. Right. Awesome. All right. I love myself out. There. It was nice meeting you. Yeah, you too. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Steve. Bye, Steve. There you go. Boom. I fit it in. I fit it in. Well done. She said. I fed it in. I'm sorry about the freezing thing. I don't know what was going on. I hope this segment turns out okay because on my end it was frozen a lot. 
And let me know what happens with that $13,000 check. Someone might lose their job over that. I'm just saying, exactly. So, I mean, somebody gave an invoice. They misdigited the account number, and then there you go. Yes. But it's fun getting a check. That you get. Uh, well, it is fun getting a check, but I hope everybody's okay and no one gets in trouble. Okay. How about one of your topics before we say goodbye? We're, oh, you're frozen again. You're frozen. I'm not you're frozen. You're frozen. I'm telling you. I'm recording you. I'm doing the recording. You're frozen. Damn it. Damn it all. I don't know, man. I don't know. It could be me. It could be. Look. No, listen. It's, it's the world. We're all, everybody's on Zoom now. Every fucking buddy is on Zoom. So, oh. yes. Hang on, I got to take a call. You got to take a call? No, I'll, I'll, I'll text. Okay. There Radiant. we go. The phone's ringing, the thing's blowing up. I'm way behind in everything. Our, uh -oh. our, our, our shows are freezing. You want to save it till next time? I don't want to do a frozen show. Yeah, I mean, you know what? We should watch this one back and make sure it's okay. Yeah. Because right. I'm not sure if it's going to be. Real quick before you go, um, you had mentioned a shipping company that you recommended working with, and Alex wanted to know about it. Oh, P Parcel Monkey. Parcel Monkey. Okay. And they do international, right? Yeah, I think they just brought on uh, DHL. They were horrible for international before, but they brought on DHL, so that should be good. Cool. Okay, thanks. Yeah, she's got her ceramic stuff, and people from Australia are wanting her product. And I said, let me talk to Tom. He said he was using a place he recommends. So uh, Yeah, our, we'll our internet's not good, so let's just like, okay. wrap it up for today. All right. Uh, my, uh, there's another one in the can. My name's Tom Wise. I'm Melinda McKenzie. And thanks for stopping by and unpacking some shit with us. And I thank Steve Laszlo for being our, our gracious guest for the second. Yes. Thank you, Steve. All right. We'll see you, when, we'll see you Wednesday. Or no, we'll see you. Oh my God. How about Friday? Friday. <laughs> oh boy. Bye-bye. Ah.